We've got a Friday live stream, subscriber submitted, a deck review, you know? And today we got King of the Land Walkers with uh, Kenrith. We got a little Sun Tzu quote, appear weak when you are strong and strong when you are weak, which kind of ties in to the, um, to the little snippet for the deck that he sent me. Uh, so here's what he says. He says, Here's a spicy brew, Kenrith King of Landwalkers. The deck contains 23 Landwalkers, tons of ramp, 3 mana doublers, and 2 ways to switch lands with opponents to ensure that your Landwalkers can get in. It's actually really smart. The deck contains none of the traditional Kenrith combos, and when opponents see the terrible creatures in the deck, they tend to leave you alone. The deck can actually sneak in a kill, sneak in and kill people efficiently by using Kenrith's ability to put counters on our unblockable creatures. The rest of Kenris' abilities are just gravy and let us stabilize once we've ramped to the moon. I, I love gravy. Who doesn't? So that's great. Uh, overall, the deck is very fun and can steal games and contains weird cards that most people will have never seen at a table. I would be honored if you did a deck review of it. So again, the Sun Tzu quote, appear weak when you're strong and strong when you're weak. You're going to have all these weak landwalk creatures that no one really perceives as too powerful. And then out of nowhere, you can turn those into a threat with Kenrith. So... Uh, if you're looking at this, it's running 910 bucks. I'm going to assume a lot of this is from Lands. It's a five-color deck. Um, but maybe not. Maybe he's got some expensive spice up in this up in this John. I don't... Uh, <laughs> Words are hard. So we're just going to go how we did last time. Kind of go in card type order. And just kind of look at what we're working with. So we've got the uh, the king of all kings. We've got Kenrith, the returned king, as the commander. Good evening, big dog. How are we feeling today? Feeling big? We feeling dog? Uh, Kenrith is four and a white for a 5-5. Five five. Pay one red. All creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn. All creatures. <clears throat> That's really cool. One and a green. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Always good. Two and a white. Target player gains five life. Cool. Three and a blue. Target player draws a card. Four and a black, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. I am cozy, dude. I feel very cozy. Very warm. Very relaxed. Uh, reviewing a deck that has land walkers in it, so I couldn't be any happier. Feeling lavish. How about you? Oh my, lavish indeed. Uh, so Kenrith, normally he's a group hug guy. He's going to be running him um, similarly. Doing some group hug stuff to kind of keep out of people's bad sides. Playing land walk creatures. Putting 1-1 one, one counters with his second ability on those landwalk creatures. Recurring those landwalk creatures if they die with his uh, his fifth ability. Up first we got creatures with Ayumi the Last Visitor. 3 and 2 green for a 7-3 legendary landwalk. Which is pretty sick. Because again, uh, he says that he's got ways to switch some of his lands with other people. So I'm sure he's got legendary lands. He can switch that legendary land with someone else. And then he's got a 7-3 unblockable, which is actually pretty solid. Birds of Paradise. Good card. Bogar Arsonist. Two and a red for a 2-1 Planeswalk. Not the Planeswalk you think. Two and a red. Sacrifice Bogar Arsonist. Destroy target Scarecrow or Planes. Uh, sure. In really specific cases, this might be useful. Um, but mainly it's just a Planeswalk, which we need Landwalk, guys. Uh, cave People. One and two red for a 1-4. If declared as attacker, Cave People get plus one plus or plus one minus two until end of turn. Pay one and two red, tap it. Target creature gains mountain walk until end of turn. Hello, horny badger. How you doing? My people, how are you? Uh, I'm looking at a landfall deck, which I'm really excited about. Kenrith. Yeah, so you can give people mountain walk with cave people, which is actually really cool. It's probably the worst walk you could give people, but... Cold-Eyed Selkie seems fantastic. One and two Simic for a 1-1 one, one island walk. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw that many cards. Yeah, <laughs> this is actually... Probably one of the better cards in here, I'd imagine. Kolos Yearling, or Yearling. Two and a red for a 1-1 one, one Mountain Walk. Pay one red, it gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn. That seems really good, too. That seems like it gets some solid damage in this deck. Colossal Whale. Five and two blue for a 5-5 five, five Island Walk. Whenever Colossal Whale attacks, you may exile target creature defending player controls until Colossal Whale leaves the battlefield. Dirtwater Wraith. Three and a black for a 1-3 with Swamp Walk. You can pay one black, give it plus one, plus oh until end of turn. I like the ones with fire breathing. I think that's particularly strong. Dryad Sophisticate. One and a green for a 2-1 non-basic land walk. This one's pretty much going to be turned on from turn two. 
in most games the commander so that's that seems particularly good in here graceful antelope two and two white for a one four planeswalk when graceful antelope deals combat damage to a player you may have target land become a planes until graceful antelope leaves play that seems good it'll interact with your other planeswalk stuff jadit jadit seems fantastic three and three green for a five five forest walk when it attacks or blocks put a two two green cat warrior token with forest walk into play there's going to be someone green at the table and they're going to be very, very nervous when you play this card. Meyer Boa. It's like in his pajamas looking for shredded beef in the in the refrigerator aisle at like 3 in the morning. The Meyer Boa. Yeah, just some just some small town hick humor. Uh, one in a green for a 2-1 Swamp Walk. Pay one green, regenerate Meyer Boa. Uh, sure. A resilient Landwalker. Can't go wrong. Idyllic Wraith. Three and a black for a 2-2 two -two Swamp Walk. If Adelic Wraith or Od Odilic, I don't know what the word is there, damages any player, that player discards a card. That seems good. Doing the thing you want to do has a bonus. River Boa. Uh, same thing as Meyer Boa. One and a green for a 2-1 Island Walk. Regenerate. Oh, except Meyer Boa has Swamp Walk. This has Island Walk. Yeah, seems fine. Especially since Regenerate, you get to keep your counters. Uh, so it particularly, it particularly works well with Kenrith's. 1-1 one, one counter ability, so that seems really good. Uh, Sakur, we got some classic ra mana ramp. Sand Squid. Oh. That's super cool. I never realized the art was like the actual squid over there. I'd never even noticed it. I was just like, oh, that's a guy standing in the middle. <laughs> that's fucking terrifying. Uh, three and a blue. Where'd you go? Three and a blue for a 2-2 two -two island walk. You may choose not to untap Sand Squid during your untap step tap target creature that creature does not untap during its controllers un untap step as long as sand squid remains tapped uh sure it's a little island walk guy that has a bonus on it garwood bandits two and two green for a two two summon bandits what's the name of that satyr i can't think of what his name is two and two green for a two two forest walk oh oh uh, um, 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 um. uh it, it's it's the thing that just doesn't look like a satyr it's the big the big monster thing yeah where is that that thing would be great in here it's got to be in here right uh yeah you need to get one of those in here my guy what's the name of that car big dog anyway you could find that because he needs to get one of those in here it doesn't look like he has one uh sand squid seems fantastic scarwood bandits two and two green for a two two lumbering satyr yep you're dead right uh, you need to get a Lumbering Seder in here, my guy. Two and two green for like a four five or a four three. I can't remember exactly. It gives every creature forest walk. It gives you and all your opponent's creatures forest walk. Um, that definitely seems like something to consider in this. Uh, Scarwood Bandits is two and two green for a two two forest walk. You pay two and a green. Tap it. Take control of target artifact. An opponent may counter this action by paying two. You lose control of this artifact if Scarwood Bandits leaves play or at the end of game. Uh, this is kind of cool. You just get to yoink an artifact for as long as you control Scarwood, and then you can keep doing that. You have to give them all back. But as long as you can keep Scarwood alive, you get to yoink artifacts as well as it just being a forest walk guy. So, bonus. Shielded. Probably one of the best land walkers out there. Uh, five and two black for a six six swamp walk. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of your opponent's upkeep, they sacrifice a creature. And it's a 6-6 six, six swamp, swamp Walk. I mean, <laughs> talk about an upside on top of what your deck's trying to do. This is perfect in here. Uh, Sulkanar the Swamp King. Two, a blue, a black, and a red for a 5-5 five, five Swamp Walk. Whenever a player plays a black spell, you may gain one life. Sure. 5-5 five, five Swamp Walk. It's a big, beefy beater. Street Race seems cool. Three and two black for a 3-4 Swamp Walk. Cycling, pay two life. Yeah, that's fine. 3-4 is not bad stats at all. Swamp walk's pretty common to have a swamp at the table. And then cycling for free just to pay two life is actually really good. Discard a card, draw a card for free. Instant speed. Pay two life. That seems pretty good. Uh, Tangle walker. Two and a green for a 2-2. Two -two. Creatures you control are unblockable as long as defending player controls an artifact land. Ooh, so all your creatures get artifact land walk. That's cool. <laughs> That's how I feel about it, Big Dog. This deck is so cool. I love it. It's just, like, making all the, like, eh things just really, really good, which I love. That's, like, one of my favorite things to do. 
Uh, and it's using one of my favorite keywords from all of Magic. Like, Landwalk is one of my favorite things. Um, so I'm with you on that. It's <laughs> This is a very cool deck list. Uh, Thada Adele Acquisitor. One and two blue for a 2 2 Island Walk. Whenever Thada Adele Acquisitor deals combat damage to a player, search that player's library for an artifact card, exile it, shuffle it. Until end of turn, you may play that card. <laughs> Uh, this might have my new vote for the best card in this deck. Thada seems insane. Just as a card, that seems really good. Eight bucks. I want to save Thada, or save Thada on the side because I might want to pick one of those up. That's actually really good. It's legendary too. Oh, I might make a Thada deck. Maybe a Thada Island Walk deck. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna make a Thada Island Walk deck, dude. Where I run all those enchantments and enchant lands and turn them into islands. Boom. Decks locked in. Thada, Voltron, Island Walk. Boom. Bop. Bam. Done. Locked in. Next deck. On to the next. Deck. Unseen Walker. One in a green for a 1 1 Forest Walk. One in two green. Target creature gains Forest Walk until end of turn. That seems great. It's exactly the type of shit you want to be doing. Vidalkin Plotter. There's a lot of. Um, Landwalk creatures. You said you had 23 in this deck? I didn't realize there's that many. Uh, where were we at? Vidalcan Plotter. Two and a blue for a 1-1. One, one. When Vidalcan Plotter enters the battlefield, exchange control of target land you control and target land an opponent controls. Or use the merfolk that turns lands into islands too. Oh my god, yes. 100%. A Whispering Shade. Three and a black for a 1-1 one, one Swamp Walk. Pay a black, it gets plus one, plus one. Seems good. I think all the fire-breathing land walks actually seem great. Rexiel again, seems fantastic. Rexiel and Shieldred are so good. Uh, three and two blue and a black for a 5A Island Walk and Swamp Walk. So this thing's essentially going to be unblockable for most people. Whenever Rexiel the Risen Deep deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into your graveyard this turn, or be put into the graveyard, sorry, exile it instead. Um, yeah, it's unblockable. It's a huge beater. You get to rip spells and play it for free. Again, upside. Yavamaya Dryad. I didn't even realize this had Forest Walk. 1 and 2 green for a 2-1 Forest Walk. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a Forest card, put it into the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle your library. Very good. You can put it into play under target player's control. So again, you can do the group hug stuff with this. It's also mana ramp for you. Uh, Yavamaya Dryad is really good, actually. 2-1, that's unblockable. 60% of games. And mana ramps you. And you can put it under play and under play uh, control of someone else, so you can give someone else a forest, so it turns on all your forest walk creatures in this deck, which is really really cool. Uh, in this deck, especially Yavamai Dry, it's fantastic. Turn on all your forest walks, very good. So that's the creatures. Uh, we pretty much saw the land walkers here, which is really cool because there's a lot more cool ones than I realized. Um, and next, we'll go on to the sorceries. Uh, we've got Austere Command, Classic Board Wipe, Blasphemous Act, Classic Board Wipe. We're going to be pretty much skipping over Removal, Board Wipe, Card Draw, uh, and Mana Ramp. Just because it's in every deck, um, it's not necessar necessarily something that is uh, set in stone. It's more of like a to-taste thing. So, not really a point in being like, alright, this runs this many. That's how many you got to run. Um, more about showing you cool decks with cool strategies. Uh, and I feel like that kind of muddies up the works. Uh, political trickery. Two and a blue for a sorcery. Choose target land you control and, it, and target land and opponent controls. Exchange control of those lands. Yeah, that's perfect. I understand why this is the uh, the art for this deck. Because that's like a perfect card in here. Bident of Thassa seems great in here. Two and two blue for a legendary enchantment artifact. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. <laughs> a lot of our creatures are going to be doing unblockable damage. So that seems perfect. Uh, and then pay one and a blue, tap it. Creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able. So you're able to tap out an opponent so you can get all your bodies through. Uh, and um, probably most of the time you'll be able to force someone to swing at someone that's not you, uh, which seems extra good. Uh, so Biden's fantastic. Great Henge, not really mana ramp, so we'll, we'll dive into it. Seven and two green for a legendary artifact. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So this thing can cost fairly cheap. Tap it, add two green to your mana pool, you gain two life. So this thing essentially can be free the turn you play it, which is really cool. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it and draw a card. Wow. Uh, <laughs> one, the Great Henge is just already an insane card. This card's just 
pushed and busted. It's it's super good in a lot of decks. Uh, and here, especially, it's super good. Giving all your land walk stuff, entering with additional one ones, perfect. Mana ramping out some more one or more land walk stuff. Yeah, more land walk stuff, hundred percent. It costing less for the bigger stuff you have, like while we're pumping stuff up with Kenrith. That'll work. Seems very good. What this is? Uh, one and two black for an enchantment. Select a creature card in play when Oblia is cast. The creature is considered out of play as long as Oblia is in play. Remain, but are also out of play. If Oblia is removed, creatures return to play tapped. Hmm. I wonder if I'm missing something. Am I missing something here, guys? Is there like a... It's just like it seems like a... Oblia eats a commander. Boom. Okay, thank you. I didn't realize that. So this is like another way that gets rid of a commander without it being able to be put into the command zone. Rough. Okay, so that's a reason you put that in the deck. Okay, so removal. Uh, Reconnaissance mission seems awesome in here. Two and two blue for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Awesome. And then we've got lands, uh, which I think are kind of important. I think there's a few that we'll probably want to talk about here. Uh, so let's see. There's a couple that I know he's got in here. There's no way he doesn't that I definitely want to talk about. And one of them is, should be coming up here, Urborg. Urborg. Uh, each land is a swamp in addition to its other types. So Urborg will turn on all your swamp walk creatures. So awesome land to run in this deck. Uh, and then Yavimaya was the other one I wanted to talk about. All lands are forest. So if you can get both these lands out, it turns on 40% of your land walk creatures uh, to be unblockable for everybody, which is extraordinarily powerful in this deck. Um, also, notice there is a ton of search like he's running like every sack land every fetch land uh because you can you can cr kind of the normal like i can fix what lands are in play is good obviously that's why you run those cards but in here you can also fix which lands are in play so you can give them to opponents so if you have a hand that's like extra full of forest walk you can be like okay i'm going to use my Let's see, what's a good one? Misty Rainforest to tutor up a forest so I can use this other card to give my opponent a forest. Now all my hands are blockable. So there's like an extra level to like running more tutor lands in this deck, which is really cool. Uh, also, there's an, there's an extra level to running shock lands because they count as swamps and forest and, and plains and islands and all that stuff in their land. They actually count as those, those type of lands for land walks. So those are extra good to give opponents because they're two land types. Uh, which turn on two different land walk types for you. So that's really, really good in this deck as well. We're, we, we've got like 12 plus submissions on the email now. So if you want to get your uh, deck submitted, uh, the email is lightshallow at gmail.com. It should be in the description. If it's not, I upload it in all my videos at the end. You can see my email. Um, it should be in the description though. Uh, and I'll put you in the queue to, to look at these on Friday nights. Have a good one, guys.